Hello, this is Carrie with Cookbook Divas, and I'm so excited to be looking through the Cottage Core Baking with, book with you. It just hit my doorstep about five minutes ago. I didn't peek inside it other than I found the chapters and marked them so I can show them to you more easily. This is 60 Sweet and Savory Bakes for Simple Cozy Living. It's by Kayla Lobermeyer, creator of Under a Tin Roof and the author of The Prairie Kitchen Cookbook. I love that Cottage Core doesn't seem to be fading out anytime soon. I don't personally try to replicate it in my own home, which is kind of a boring suburban house, but I like to think of myself as living in a, in a cottage or a chateau sometimes when I think about it. But it's all about comfort and coziness and things being pretty and a little bit whimsical. And I'm so delighted that Cottage Core isn't out and people are still writing books about it and baking things based on the Cottage Core ideals. And I think this is going to inspire me to do a lot of tea parties. So I haven't cooked or baked anything out of this because I've only owned it for about five minutes. It came out from Page Street Publishing, one of our favorite cookbook publishers, recently in 2024. Here's the dedication. As I quickly flipped through uh, to find the chapter markers, the photography in here is stunning. The ideas are so beautiful. We're going to want to bake everything out of this. So here's the table of contents, which we'll just go through really quickly. Chapter one is afternoon tea, quick breads, muffins, and scones. Chapter two is country garden, pies, and tarts. I love that. Chapter three is forest lore, cakes and icings. I can't wait to see what that means. And then cozy hearth yeast breads, romantic cafe pastries, fanciful pancakes, waffles, and donuts. And then finally, the last chapter is old fashioned desserts. Here's the introduction. I love the floral illustrations on some of the pages. Here is the first chapter, and the book starts off with a gorgeous bang. Afternoon tea, quick breads, muffins, and scones. Time for a spot of tea, won't you join me, she writes. In the charming Victorian era, taking a leisurely pause for tea in the afternoon was incredibly popular. Yes, and I'm going to do that after I'm done with this video, and I have my mug all ready for tea, and I have a little bit of cold tea still in there. So the first official recipe of the book is pecan or pecan, depending on what part of the country you're in, pecan coffee cake muffins. I'm noticing that she's giving the ingredients in grams and tablespoons and teaspoons and grams. Yep. So both ways. Next is blackberry ricotta shortcakes. And how many it makes and the recipe for the whipped honey ricotta cream. Hummingbird bread with cream cheese frosting. How adorable. This is making me thirsty for tea, definitely. Let's skip ahead to the next chapter. Country garden pies and tarts. Cute, I love the miniature sizes so everybody gets their own. After a long day of picking fruit from the local orchard, it's wonderful to spend time in the kitchen Baking with your haul of fresh blueberries, strawberries, raspberries, peaches, or apples. And I live in Washington State, and we have orchards, and we grow all of those. Yay! Mixed berry wildflower pop-tarts. Cute. That's really fun, and I see some edible flowers on top. And I don't have edible pansies that grow in my yard, but I do have violas, I think. Dark chocolate tart bordeloo. There's a recipe for peach, rhubarb, and basil pie. Okay, I put basil in my peach cocktails, but I never thought of putting it in a pie. That's intriguing. Old-fashioned oatmeal pecan pie. Pretty. Okay, I gotta skip to the next chapter, sorry. <clears throat> Whimsical cookies and bars. Well, that's fun. See, I love whimsy. These are berry-filled pizelle cookies. Just a couple bite-sized. That would actually be nice for a cocktail party where you're serving sparkling wine or champagne. Tiramisu blondies. Next is raspberry and white chocolate chunk cookies. And brown sugar shortbread acorn cookies. Oh, cute. And Cottage Core definitely has a lot of forest themes because... Cottages are usually in the forest. I don't know why. Lemon German... Uh-oh. I forget how to say this cookie name. Ugh, Springerl? I'm going to have to look that up. 
for my next video next time I have to say that word. Sorry. Mars, oh, ma <clears throat> Mascarpone Espresso Brownies with peanut butter ganache. All right, next chapter, if I can find it with my tiny little post-it notes. I found it, and I don't have the fingernails to get to it. Excuse me. Here we go. Rye, oh, rose-infused lemon bars. Now I can find the next chapter, hopefully. This one is the Forest Lore Cakes and Icings. For a magical event, you need a truly enchanted cake. This chapter of beautifully decorated cakes was inspired by cozy fantasies. Oh, how fun. This is a forest floor log cake. Pink lady strawberry cake. Oh my gosh, this is gorgeous. This one's on the cover too, you notice. There it is. Oh, this is so pretty. This is going to be an amazing gift book. And if you have Bridgerton fr friends or Downton Abbey friends, this is a great gift for them. Bridgerton has its own tea party book, but this would be a nice addition to it. Honey and chamomile mini layer cakes. You know, these all look pretty doable. I could I could make those. When I decorate, I'm not good with a pastry bag, so it wouldn't look this cute, but it would still taste good, I'm sure. Lavender and Earl Grey Petty Fours. Oh, how pretty. I'd love to hear what you guys think of this new cookbook in the comments. Be sure to hit subscribe if you like cookbook look-throughs like this. Phases of the Moon Triple Chocolate Cupcakes. Painted Marble Spice Cake. Oh, gorgeous. Okay, let's skip ahead to the next chapter. <clears throat> the Cozy Hearth Yeast Breads. Bread is a love language, she writes. <gasps> Summer Garden Sourdough Focaccia. I have a special place in my heart and mouth and stomach for focaccia because it's delicious, but I love it when people make it beautiful too. Look at that. Oh. Chive and Asiago sourdough bowl. Nice. That would be nice in the hearth and make, imagine what your house would smell like when that's baking. Rolled brioche bread. Cinnamon star bread with eggnog icing. How pretty is that? Got to go to the next chapter. Romantic cafe pastries. Everything in this book is so beautiful and delicious looking. Classic croissants dipped in chocolate. I am not personally going to attempt making croissants at home ever again. That was a lot of work. Here's their step-by-step -step photos. Strawberry cheesecake cruffins. Cute. Chocolate hazelnut chew au crackalin. Raquiline. I just pronounced that wrong. That's okay. Raspberry pistachio eclairs. Okay, next we have two chapters left. Fanciful pancakes, waffles, and donuts. Donuts are my weakness. It's like kryptonite to me. I love donuts. Here's Swedish stacked lemon ricotta pancakes. Imagine serving those at brunch when you have house guests. That would blow them away. Dark chocolate black forest pancakes. Oh my gosh. I love cherries. Oh, I love cherries. Okay, next. Blueberry mascarpone stuffed crepes. And I sadly have to leave this chapter and go to the final one. Old-fashioned desserts. There is something so lovely and cozy about an old-fashioned style dessert. These are the desserts you will find inside your grandma's old community cookbook. Yes. Sea salt butterscotch pots de creme. Well, my grandmother made butterscotch jello, but she didn't make it from the packages of jello. She made it from scratch somehow. I don't know what was happening, but she didn't use gelatin because we were vegetarians. But she would never have thought to put sea salt in it back in the 1970s when I was a little kid. It just wouldn't have occurred to her. But this sounds amazing. <clears throat> Strawberry apricot basque cheesecake. If I remember correctly, Basque cheesecakes don't have quite as much sugar as other kinds, which I prefer. I definitely don't want too much sugar. Layered blueberry, no baked cheesecakes. So pretty. And let's do one more. How about oh, brie and apple crisp filled baked apples? I am so impressed with the Cottage Core Baking Book. I'm so glad I got to look through it. Be sure to hit subscribe so you can see more of our cookbook look throughs. Thanks for watching.